All right. Thank you, Ashley, for that lovely introduction. Um, hey, guys. Uh, my name is Steven, and I'm going to be taking you guys through all the information you need to know about when you arrived to the Epic program. Uh, we're going to aim to make this pretty short because I know you guys have a lot of questions, and I think that's the best thing about these webinars is you get to hear other people's questions and ask your own and get um, answers. <clears throat> so let's begin. Let's just jump right into it. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay, too. Um, anyways, just a little background information about me. I'm from the United States. I'm 26 years old, and I've been a Gepic teacher for the last two years in Buchan at an elementary school. And before coming here, I had no prior knowledge of Korean culture, Korean language, and I had no teaching experience uh, at all. So I think in a lot of ways, I'm exactly in the same situation a lot of you guys are in right now. So. Anyways, like I said, my goal today is to prepare you, to tell you everything you know, in short, how to become epic at Gepic. That's trademarked by me now. Anyways, first thing we got to talk about is culture shock. And I know you guys um, think you might be prepared for this, but uh, some of you might not. Culture shock is going to happen, and it might happen very hard, or you might take it very well. Um, but the best way to negate it is to prepare for it beforehand so nothing's a surprise. You're ready to tackle it head on. So let's show you what. Uh, I'm going to show you, you know, things you need to expect a little bit. Um, first principle, remember you will be traveling to a different country. I know Korea is economically on the same <clears throat> level as you know the country you're in now. It's got a big tech industry and Everything looks really nice in pictures, right? But it grew up on a completely different continent than us across the ocean, isolated for thousands of years. And it's a lot different, actually. Um, you have to remember, your favorite food, you know, won't necessarily be here. I was really bummed that there's no ranch dressing, but, you know, it's Korea. I wanted, if I was going to Uganda for a year to teach English, I don't think I could really be angry that there's not ranch dressing, right? Um, Customs are really different too. How you respect um, people generally, I would say generally back uh, in the United States, the rule is you respect someone who's bigger than you. But here, it's you respect someone who's older than you. No matter how they are acting, you always have to respect them just based on that they're older than you. Um, one of these things that I noticed was when you're on a bus, you know, if there's an older person that comes on that's older than you, you have to give up your seat for them. So you can't just uh, be that guy and pretend you're asleep. You're supposed to stand up. But um, another thing that wasn't related to age, but kind of Korean culture was <laughs> when I came here, I did the very, you know, I opened uh, the door for people and I would hold it open and they would look at me strange and no one said thank you uh, in Korean or in English. Um, so I was like, oh, these guys are rude. But then, you know, I talked to some Koreans about it. They're like, no, we just don't do that. You know, it's kind of weird if you do that. So um, be prepared for things like that. Customs are going to be different. Um, things may cost more. Yeah, um, if you want to continue trying to eat the same stuff you're eating right now, it's all going to be imported. And I had, um, I eat Quaker oatmeal for breakfast every day. And here it's about $24 for a canister, which is really expensive. So um, be prepared that. You're going to have to make some little life changes probably if you don't want to spend a lot. Um, and also things may not even be flat out available. Um, turkey is one thing that's just non-existent here. You can find little package pieces of it at Costco in Seoul, but other than that, it's not here. Deodorant is another thing that's very uh, rare. And another thing, oh, what was it? Um, I forget. Uh, ranch dressing, yeah. <laughs> ranch dressing is just not available here. Um, ironically, though, Thousand Island dressing is, is really prevalent. Um, anyways, one another thing you need to learn, um, you should learn, is Korean. You should do that now because when you come here, <clears throat> it's not as this place, while it is in, you know an international place for tech, it's not as international and they don't speak English as much as you have heard or you think that they do. It's not like um, you know Singapore where they have multiple languages going on. It's really only Korean here. Um, so um, the CEO of Korea, he always uh, would lecture me. 
because um, I would partner with them for a, a lot of stuff. And he always said, you need to learn Korean. You know, an infant, uh, an infant doesn't learn to speak because it necessarily wants to. It learns to speak to survive. And that's the truth here is if you come here and don't know a word of Korean, it's going to be really hard to survive. How are you going to just pointing that stuff is not a good way to do it. So start learning Korean now. Um, at least learn the Korean alphabet and how to, characters are constructed. It's really easy. It's only about 35 characters and it's a completely phonetic alphabet. So you don't, um, it's not like the tricky stuff of English, you know, how words are spelled one way but sound completely different than what uh, the spelling says it's supposed to. Um, and also, you're not going to understand, if you don't know how to do that, you're not going to understand anything. You're not going to know what kind of restaurant it is, you know, what this item is. Even going to the store, think about it, you're looking for milk, and there's all these different kinds of milk, and you can't read Korean. Um, it's you you got to learn at least a little bit coming here. Um, some people, they make it through here, and they don't learn a single word, but they have a completely crappy time. <laughs> doing it. So, anyways, another thing you have to be uh, prepared for, since you won't be able to speak Korean fluently, even in, you know, six months probably, um, you're going to rely a lot on other people, and that will make you uncomfortable if, you know, you don't usually do that. Um, I still get a little uncomfortable because I need to set up services or change something at my bank account, and, you know, a lot of times people aren't available to help you out, so um, just be prepared for that. Anyways, a good resource to use if you haven't already heard of it is TalkToMeInKorean.com. It's actually the biggest and best site, in my opinion, that's dedicated to teaching foreigners Korean from Korean people. And it's cool because they have audio lessons that are paired with worksheets you can use to work on stuff. Um, the guy, Hyun Sun, is a genius. He's, uh, he can speak like six languages or something like that. He's amazing, and he's a really good host, too. And also they have video lessons to teach you more about certain phrases, pop phrases, and um, Korean culture, which is good. So now a big thing I'm sure you guys are, all want to know is what should you pack? Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have been doing dr packing drills where you're putting stuff in, taking stuff out, and trying it a different way. But um, hopefully I can shed some light on what you should bring and what you don't necessarily have to. Um, first, before we go into this, you should buy these immediately. These are space bags, and they're pretty much vacuum sealed bags. You can buy them at, uh, I don't know where you guys are all from. I'm assuming, you know, the UK, Canada, United States, Australia. But um, uh, in the United States, we have these at Target and Walmart, and they're amazing. They're not that expensive either. What you can do is they give you these big, thick plastic bags, and pretty much like it shows in the picture, you can pack pillows, huge comforters, blankets. All your clothes, and when you, what you do is you hook the um, the vacuum cleaner hose attachment to a little clip in it, and then it sucks out all the air and it compresses it amazingly. So it's like you don't even have to worry about space in your suitcase anymore. You only have to worry about the weight. So honestly, I highly recommend going to getting these. You can pack a lot more clothes, and you can pack uh, pack pack. <laughs> you can pack your um, your bedding, which is going to be key. Okay, so what's that? My basic rule is before you even start doing any of that stuff, get one regular sizing of every toiletry you use daily, whether it be shampoo, body wash, toothpaste, um, you know, lotion for your face, face cream, or whatever. Um, yes, you can buy a lot of that stuff here, but wouldn't you rather have a, at least one? supply of it so you can last a couple weeks here or a month here because you might not be able to get out to the store for you know a couple days when you're here maybe even a week so you guys got to be prepared for living here without being able to go to the store immediately okay um, general recommendations for stuff uh, that every graphic teacher tells everyone else to bring every other graphic teacher is deodorant it's uh, Koreans don't use deodorant um, Actually, it's really strange. Is Korean sweat doesn't smell like it doesn't. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it really doesn't smell, and so they don't use deodorant. They just put on you know cologne and perfume. Um, toothpaste. They have toothpaste here, of course, to brush their teeth. 
because I get else. But um, the fluoride levels are a lot lower than what we're used to. So you know when you brush your teeth, it kind of has that good burn. You know? <laughs> That's fluoride, and that toothpaste here doesn't really have it. So it doesn't feel as clean usually. So if that's your thing, go to Costco uh, and buy a huge pack of toothpaste and a huge pack of deodorant. Also bring a sheet set because you, while you don't know if you're going to have a full double-sized bed or a twin bed, um, the twin beds in Korea are a little bit bigger than twins back home and the full doubles are a little bit smaller than they are back home. So if you get uh, go to Target and you get a full double-sized fitted sheet set, you know, that will be perfect and it'll fit over any mattress you get. Um, one other little note is I highly recommend bringing the sheet set because, first of all, um, if you don't open it, they're really small and tightly packed when you buy it at Target. But also here, um, the sheet says varnish soft. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, definitely bring it from home so you feel more comfortable. Okay? And towels. Um, definitely bring at least one towel or two towels, hopefully, um, because Korean towels are really small. Like washcloth, small. Um, so definitely bring a towel. Um, also bring any cold medicines and pain reducers that you need to bring because Koreans, you know, like I said, it's a completely different culture that's been developing separate from ours for, for thousands of years. So they use more herbal remedies and stuff like that um, that we we don't use. Um, so definitely bring the cold medicine you're used to. Bring like a kind of big container of it. Also for headaches, you know, Aleve and Tylenol bring those too because they don't really use uh, uh, that stuff here. And then we're going to talk about electrical plug adapters. I know you guys are bringing a lot of electronics and you have questions about what's going to work and we're going to go into that right now. So, I'm so, so, sorry, you Stephen. Your right now. I'm betting that your AC adapter. Hello? Yes. Stephen, I'm sorry, but we cannot hear you very well. Hello. Oh, really? Yes. What about now? Um, can you say anything? Now. Yeah, let me count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, Is that okay? Oh, uh, everyone can can everyone hear me okay too? Yeah, you sound perfect. Not really. Okay. This is very loud and strong. Let me change the setting in my preferences. What about now? Can you hear me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, Can you go ten. closer to your microphone? What about now? And uh, I think the former one is better. Former one, okay. Let me try that one second. Sorry about this, guys. I'm using a kind of old computer. Former one. Okay, what about now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, ten. this is better. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. God, good thing she said that, or you know, I'd just be talking to myself, right? Um. Anyway, so we're going to talk about AC adapters. Um, if you were to look at what's plugged into your laptop right now, you're probably going to see something like this. Um, it's an AC adapter, and it has um, it's a little box with two cables or two cords coming up either side. One goes into your laptop or your electronics device, and the other one can be taken out and um, uh, removed, I should say, and is plugged into the wall. The cool thing about um, these things are they are little transformers. So when you uh, turn it over, it'll say 110 to 240 uh, volts usually. And that means that it can convert to wattage. Because in the United States, we use uh, you know, a 110 current, whereas here they use a 240. So you have to have a conversion there. Luckily, these things will do it. And those little cords that I circled right there, that can be, um, you can buy the Korean version for that. It's the same plug on that side, just with um, a Korean prongs on the other side. So it's good. So um, if you have those, congratulations. That's, that's great news for a lot of your electronics. Um, another thing is the AC, no, the plug adapter. Um, these things are, uh, if you don't have the AC adapter cord, if it's uh, something else like a little power supply that directly has a prongs on it, 
you can plug it into these guys as long as it says 110 to 240. Um, these things are really cheap, usually about five bucks here. Um, if you can buy those in the United States that have the Korean prongs, definitely do it because it'll be cheaper in the United States. The other thing is the uh, the other option is the wattage converter. Um, this is if it doesn't say 110 to 240, if it just says 110, you have to use this to convert it you know, to an acceptable level of uh, that Korea can use. And these things are a lot more expensive and they are also unreliable. Um, I know that Xbox 360s, um, that's a huge issue because even though they have the power brick, you have to buy a wattage converter, a big one too. And if that thing fails, which it has for some of my friends that bought cheaper ones, your Xbox 360 is done. It just it fries the brick and you're out of luck. So um, these things you'll use more for uh, really small electronic appliances. Uh, electric toothbrushes and electric shavers, I know they're all usually 110, so you have to get these things for it. Um, for video game systems, I'm not sure, to be honest, except for the 360. Uh, anyways, um, my personal recommendations, this is completely optional, but this is something um, I always recommend to people, is bring a Brita with extra filters, because don't you want to start drinking, being able to drink water immediately? Um, and also Brita's you can buy here, but they're extremely expensive, like $60 for one with like one filter. Um, also bring your favorite seasonings if you're going to be cooking at your house, because um, they're not always available here. So things like garlic, salt, paprika, cinnamon, um, bring your favorite sauces, ranch, sriracha, barbecue, because like I said, they're pretty rare here, and if you can find them, they're going to be really expensive. Um, Korea doesn't really use ovens like we do um, back home, so they cook everything on the stove, and for me, I didn't do that that much. Um, I never cooked chicken that way, so I didn't want to kill myself, so I brought a meat thermometer, and it was in Fahrenheit, because it's brought in the United States, and um, you know, I can measure... Uh, if the meat is cooked or not. Um, also bring a measuring cup because they use the metric system here. So if you're trying to do a recipe from back home, you know, cups, uh, they don't have measuring cups in the way, you know, half a cup, a full cup, a quarter cup, or things like that. Um, this one I, I think is really important. If you have a spare wireless router lying around, bring that for Korea because when you get internet, they're going to provide you with a router or they're going to require you to go out and buy one. And you're gonna have to set it up completely in Korean, which you know you're gonna have to again rely on someone else. If there's a problem with it, with which with wireless routers there often are, you have to do it in Korean. So I highly recommend you buy, bring, or if you have a spare one, yeah, bring that wireless router. Also bring a comforter. Um, you can get these pretty cheap at you know at IKEA if you have those around you. Um, use the space bag; it'll save a lot of space. It's cold here, and you don't know if if um, the teacher before you is going to leave a blanket, and also if the school's never had a teacher before you, there might not even be a blanket. So bring a comforter. Um, also gifts. Um, we could go into forever about this topic, but just so you know, bring a gift for your principal, your vice principal, and co-teacher. Okay. And now let's talk about really quickly what will happen at the airport when you arrive. You guys are going to be coming soon. It's exciting. I know. You guys might be. Uh, either really stoked or really nervous. Um, so what's going to happen? Let's say your name is Adam and you're from the United States. You're going to arrive at Incheon Airport. You're going to go through immigration, which is really fast. And then you're going to grab your bags. Then when you come out of the gate, there's going to be a person holding a sign with your name on it. That's going to be the Corvia shuttle pickup just for you guys. Corvia is an amazing company. They're the only ones that I think that do this. Um, they send a driver uh, to pick you up. Um, it has a nice kind of big size van to put all your luggage and stuff in it. Um, it's free. It's completely free. There's no charge to you and you don't tip. Um, that's another thing in Korea. There's no tipping of any kind. So um, you don't have to tip. It's completely free. It's great. And then they're going to take you to your apartment and hopefully there you'll be met by your co-teacher. If your co-teacher doesn't have um, that in their schedule or they can't do it that certain day, maybe uh, you know, the teacher before you will be there to let you in, or I, I'm not exactly sure what happened. Talk about your recruiter about what's going to happen with that. And then finally, on Monday, if you're arriving this weekend, um, you will go to your school to meet your staff. Um, and then starts what we like to call the make or break period or expat limbo. I'll be very frank and very honest. 
this make makes and breaks teachers here. Um, this is the time period between when you start school and when you get your ARC card. When In this period, because you don't have your ARC card, by the way, this is about three weeks, you cannot sign up for internet, you cannot sign up for a bank account, you cannot sign up for a cell phone, you cannot sign up for TV, you cannot sign up for any service, you cannot speak Korean, cannot, and you also usually cannot understand Korean. So you are very isolated unless you are an adventurous person and like to go out exploring, which um, I highly recommend. But think, if you, right now in your house, if you couldn't go outside because you couldn't speak to anyone, and you had no internet, you had no TV, you had no cell phone, well, Corvier will provide a cell phone, but you had no smartphone, what would you do? So that's the thing is, it's a really tough period that mentally breaks some people, but once you get past it, it's amazing. So, uh, a lot of people, honestly, will even run away. Um, a lot of Hagwon teachers, uh, they run away. And it happens in public school, too, let's be honest. Um, but anyways, it's, this is the mental test. But I'm preparing you for it. So just know it's going to be very difficult for about three weeks. Um, but if you were to fill those three weeks with learning Korean, you know, getting head up on stuff, learning the key phrases, cleaning up and setting up the you know, the perfect apartment, making it exactly the way you want it to, scrubbing it from the ground up because, you know, you want to make it your own and rearranging the furniture and exploring your city, you know, just with a camera or just walking around and seeing what it's like, those three weeks will go by fast and you won't even, it won't even be that bad. Luckily, Corvier will provide you with a cell phone and if you really need internet, maybe you can steal it from a neighbor if their wireless is unguarded. Or you can go to a coffee shop, and the coffee shops will have free wireless. But just at home, it might be a little boring, okay? So, but with your ARC card, you can get a bank account, you know, get your check card. You can sign up for internet, for your smartphone, and all that stuff. So, it's going to be great. And when you sign up for a smartphone, you know, you can get a brand new phone if you aren't already using one. You can get an iPhone 5S, or they just released, the, uh, announced the Galaxy S5 yesterday, so... You can get any of that great stuff. And last thing, remember, the Spring 2014 Corvier Party is going to be soon. It's going to be on April 5th, actually, and it's always a lot of fun. Um, all you guys, since you're new teachers, you're going to get a free beer voucher. Um, uh, so you can get cash it in for a free beer. It's a great way to meet people. A lot of people are going to be in your same town, so you can meet people that you can hang out with later, and also you can meet old and new Corvian people through Gepic and at the program. And also you can win some great stuff. We always have contests um, and quizzes where you can win like team money cards, the transit cards, uh, CGV, movie tickets, and a lot of other cool stuff. So more details about that will be coming soon. Anyways, that took a lot more time than I thought or than I wanted it to. But now let's open it up for questions. Um, you can ask. We prefer one question at a time, but um, you know you can always requay yourself, cue, quay, cue yourself, and ask another question if you have it. So let's try to have as many questions as we can. So Ashley, are you going to be moderating this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your great presentation, Stephen. So, okay, now we are going to have the Q and A time. Uh, if you have any questions please use the question box or raise your hand by clicking the hand button uh, that is on the right side of a bulb okay then i will i guess they could type then, too correct right oh mute your microphone okay anybody have questions Um, okay, we got a question from Malinba, and she asked, okay. how was your first official day of teaching? First official day, uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, <laughs> uh, the first day you actually go to school, you won't be teaching. Um, the first day is what they call like ceremony day, and all single subject teachers um, don't teach, so music, English, you know, science. So you won't be doing, um, te you won't be teaching that day. You'll just be figuring out your schedule, uh, seeing the book you're going to use, um, what grades you're going to teach, and how you're going to work on stuff with your co-teacher. The first actual teaching day for me it was just um, introduction. So make sure you make a introductory PowerPoint about yourself with lots of pictures. Um, 
remember, the st you know, this is elementary school for most of you. They're not going to understand anything you're saying, so you have to show them. So, how, you know, show, you know, where you're from, about your family, what are your hobbies, and show a picture of your house. They love, these kids love pictures of your house because it's, like, gigantic to them. So, um, yeah, definitely make a PowerPoint about yourself. Okay, next question is from Melia. When is the best time to give gifts to your co-teacher, vice principal, and principal? If you are, if you're meeting your co-teacher at your um, accommodation that first day or the second day or whatever, um, give it to that person then. For your principal and vice principal, the first day before you are teaching, um, I did that and. Honestly, giving gifts changed my complete time here because some people, if you go to other groups, they will say it's not necessary or, you know, it's more traditional to bring a gift um, the month, you know, after one month, after you get your first paycheck. But the point of this is most likely your principal and vice principal won't be able to speak English. And so you just want to have a gesture of goodwill from the beginning. Make them like you. You know, everyone likes a gift, right? Like. If you give it to them uh, right when you first meet them, present them with it, they'll just have a good feeling about you. Um, and so it really helps, especially in the case of, you know, the last teacher before you at your school sucked, you know. So um, definitely do it the first day that you get there. Just bring them in your bag and make sure to wrap them. Don't just, you know, whip out a huge bottle of, of wine or something like that. Um, have it package so it's more modest, okay? Otherwise, it might look like a bribe if you just gave him this huge thing. Uh, okay, another question is from Nikki, and she's um, asking about her smartphone. So if we already mm -hmm. have a smartphone and we get it unlocked, will we mm -hmm. be available to use it with the Korean SIM card? That is a very tricky question, and the answer is yes and no. Um, what you need to do is, if it is unlocked, you need to go to the place and act and ask them if they know if it'll work in Korea. Because Korea uses um, a different band. Um, it's really hard to explain what a band is. Like a different frequency for calls. Um, but yes, generally, if it is unlocked, you can get a SIM card for here. Just make sure. You do a lot of research on the internet, and you do it with your provider back home. I know they don't like to unlock phones, but um, yeah, my friend, if it's a Galaxy S3 and above, or if it's an iPhone, usually you can do it. But even if you, um, even if you can't, still bring your cell phone or your smartphone because you can use the Wi-Fi in the subways. The subways all have Wi-Fi, and in coffee shops. Um, so right. it'll be good. Okay. Next question from Keegan. I have a question about the indoor slippers for school. Are there are they, are they sorry? Are they regular house slippers? Also, are they easy to buy in Korea for those with lighter shoe size? Oh, you know, I wish I could show those, but they're at, yeah, they're at school. Um, don't bring them from home. They don't really have. I've never seen them before from back in the United States. They're here, they're really cheap, like eight dollars, and they're just it's just like a, a, a kind of a slipper that's used with a, a sandal. It's kind of weird. But um yeah, don't worry about that. Your first night or when you go to the store, just go pick some up. And uh yeah, you're supposed to only wear that inside uh the school so it keeps it cleaner. Okay. Can you hear me okay, by the way? Ashley? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, before we, I read another question, Keegan raised her hand, so I'll unmute her. Okay. Hello, Keegan. Sorry, I was, the second part of the question was, um, I have pretty large feet, like I wear a size 11, and so my question is kind of like, am I going to be able to find the size slippers like they're going to fit my feet in Korea? They are unisex. These slippers are unisex. I mean, I guess if you're going with a standard color like black. Um, if if you are worried, those are pretty large feet, Keegan. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, you can bring you know regular slippers from home. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, if if it's a really big bottle, just you can you can buy them at home. Just don't worry about you know if you're like oh I can't fit anything else in my bag. Um, you can buy it here, but yeah, if you have larger feet, um, Korean shoe sizes are a lot smaller, uh, uh, so you can bring it from home. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. No problem. Okay, uh, I'll unmute Luke. 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 Hi, Luke. Hey Stephen, hey, hey Ashley. Um, I'm just wanting to know with clothing and sizing, um, I'm about six foot one, six foot two. Um, is it mm -hmm. hard to actually find clothing for my size? Um, that is a good question. One of our really, one of my really good friends. You're Australian, correct? Yeah. Uh, he's my friend. He's this huge guy. You know, two eighty. Australian six foot two, I think. Um, he does say he has a, a, a problem finding finding sizes. You will have to go to more foreigner areas. Luckily, you like Epic, so you're going to be within distance of Seoul, where you can go to the more international areas where you will have your clothes. But if you were in a very rural town or something like that, yeah, it would be decently hard to find stuff. But uh, it can be done, and also you can buy stuff online on G Market. G Market is in English. So. Okay. Yep. Cheers. Look, Don't worry about that too much. Um, like Keegan said, shoe size does start to become a problem, but uh, you can always order from Australia and have your parents ship you shoes, you know? Okay, Luke. Uh, also, can you ask the questions about the gifts? Yeah, I also wanted to know with the gifts. Uh, you mentioned wine before as well, but are there any type of gift which is frowned upon? Yes, yes. it is deemed too expensive. I actually, um, I remember before the second time I came here, um, my vice principal, he was, he really loved alcohol, like to an unhealthy degree. And um, so I thought, you know, I'm going to bring this guy some scotch, you know, from the United States. It wasn't even that much. It was like $30 scotch or something like that. And I brought it and he rejected it because it was too, it was, it was almost going on the bordering line of what is considered maybe a bribe. Like hard liquor is, is too much. But um, that's why I always recommend wine. Because wine is really cheap and also it's a very universal gift and it's they know it's not that much they know it's it's a decent it's a good gift but they know it doesn't cost exorbitant amounts you know mm -hmm. so um stay away from that um also oh oh great this is this is for luke correct yeah okay luke that this is a great question and i and i wanted to mention this um yeah, this is a great question and don't bring anything that's going to require a lot of explanation. I remember there was a webinar a year ago where um, a guy wanted to bring Coca-Cola in the bottles, and I knew exactly what he was thinking. He was saying, oh, you know, in every country, Coke tastes different, and you know, the bottle's a little bit different. But I think you're not going to be able to explain this to your principal who can't speak, you know, who can't speak English. It's going to be very hard for you to talk about why this is not just a regular bottle of Coke you're giving him. So try to make it something that they just are, um, you know, they can see visually and be like, oh, this is, you know, this is a gift, you know. Um, my rule of thumb is if you want to give it to someone in the United States, don't give it here. Like some people always bring, um, what is it, like honey? And I think that's a kind of a strange gift unless it was in a really cool, crafty jar. But if it was just a bottle of two dollar honey from the supermarket, you know, you want to give that to someone back home. So don't give it here. I hope that made it a little bit more clear. Yeah, that was great. Cheers. Oh, no problem, man. No problem, man. Unmuted. Okay. Any other questions? Spit them out. Yeah. It's your last chance, right? Yeah. 
Was there any topics? Maybe not a question, but there was a topic people wanted me to go over. Um, oh, Ashley, oh, you actually, you uh, actually, oh, actually, oh. Donald raised his hand. Donald. Uh huh. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, we'll get three more questions. Okay. Okay. Donald, can you say something? Your questions to us. Not. Oh, okay. There we go. Is it working? Yes. Yeah, Donald, we can hear you great. Great. Um, I had a question about gyms in Korea. Um, I heard a lot of them are very expensive, and I was wondering if I have any uh, tips about that, maybe. Uh, Donald, who's your recruiter? Uh, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley. Okay. There's a great article that a friend of mine wrote on this. It was a very lengthy thing about gyms in Korea. I'll send it to you. It's got all the information about the pricing, what you wear, the sizes, um, what not to do. Um, I can actually post it. I'll force, post it on the Corvia Gepic group. Um, all right. Thank you. Yeah, generally they are more set expensive than back home in the United States or Canada, and they're also a lot smaller. So uh, be prepared for that. But uh, it's good that you want to keep you know physical fitness going. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you. And yeah, no problem. Okay, we got another question from Debra, and she is talk asking, how is it working with your co-teacher? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Um, this is going to be a relationship that is going to take a lot of work. I know you guys are coming here and thinking the focus is going to be completely. This is off the record. Like I'm saying this from my own point of view. Um, you're thinking that the. Uh, focus is just on the students, that is not correct. The focus is going to be on the relationships with people at your school. You have to work your ass off to get on your co-teacher's best side, you know, and make sure you guys have a great relationship to where you guys are working effectively together. Um, also, it is a little bit of a political game of who you need to, you know, respect everyone, but there are more important people at your school, your principal, vice principal, your head teacher. You have to go in there thinking, it's not that you're going to be kissing butt, it's that you need to, you know, show them that you're a hardworking person, and if, when they start to like you, your life is great. Whenever your school and your co-teacher, you're getting along with your co-teacher, life is perfect, it's amazing, your co-teacher will be down to, you know, help you out more, like take you to the bank to do this stuff, and, you know, your principal might let you take a few days just randomly off. That should be your main focus for the first month, is making those relationships with people perfect. Always when you see another teacher, bow to them and say, Anyang haseo. Like, don't say in English, S try to make an effort to um, speak Korean to them. Even if you can't understand it, just try to say it to them respect in the most respectful manner. Bow to them um, and just have a smile. Like that's another cu cultural thing. Is in Korea, no one really smiles that much. So um, yeah, in in review, your first month that's relationship time. Try to make the best relationship possible with your co-teacher. Do anything you can for them. Say, you know, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you out when it. That's the correct order of power. You are below your co-teacher right now. It's, you're not equals. Um, in Korean system, you're brand new to the school, so actually you're starting out at the bottom. Just you know, act like you are there for them to assist them. They'll appreciate it a lot. They will love you, and your life will be amazing. But if you go there and the co-teacher is a little bit bitter at first, just keep working at it. Keep working at it. Keep working at it. You know. Because it will get better, and you know your life will get better. So it was a very long answer. Okay, so uh, because of the time limitation, we'll get just one more question from Luke. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll unmute Luke, and please ask your question. I'm muted. Thanks, Ashley. Um, I was just wanting to know uh, what the role, I guess, of the co-teacher will be in like once you've got through that first month of trying to form a relationship, um, like how much uh, input they'll have in the classroom itself. And I was also wanting to know uh, what what the 
um, best sort of teaching resources you found to be are? Uh... Okay, so the first question is, um, actually, can you meet Luke for a second? I'm getting like a lot of, like a lot of, uh, what do you call it, echo. Um, the first question was about uh, what is the role of a co-teacher. The, the tricky thing is the word co you think means 50-50, but actually you have to let the co-teacher choose the policies, all the policies, unless they ask you specifically for what you think and what you should do. Because, you know, they, they know Korean students better than us, you know, they've been teaching for a long time. So let them make all the disciplinary rules. Let them say how you're going to use the book, if we're going to play this many games, if you're going to play games at all. Um, let them make those decisions. If they ask for you, uh, for your opinion, then you can slip it in and say, hey, well, you know, I found this game. Let me show you. Always show them um, what you're going to do because if you're just explaining it, like I said, there is a little bit of a language barrier. They might not fully understand what your aims or your goals through using this uh, particular method are. Um, the co-teachers also, they are in charge of you um, solely that everything that happens with you, medical checks, visa, they are responsible for. So it's an, that's another thing is it's a huge burden for them and a lot of English teachers, to be honest, when they find out that their school is going to have a native English teacher, they're like, ah, oh, damn it, you know, like this is, there's going to be all, it's exciting, but there's going to be a lot of work for them. So just try to please them as much as possible and like I said, your life will rock. Um, as for division of making lesson plans, you, in my case, it's been 50-50. I've heard it pulled in every different direction that the co-teacher says, no, nope, just make a game, I'll make everything else. Or I've heard, also heard of the co-teacher saying, you know what, I think I'm going to sit in the back of the classroom. You teach however you want. You won't know until you come. Um, just try to prepare yourself as much as possible. And I'm sorry, what was the second question? Can you unmute Luke again? I'm muted. Oh, just, just a quick one. I was wanting to know uh, what the best teaching resource you found was to be. Um, oh, okay. websites and that sort of thing. Um, there's um, one, maybe you've already seen it. Um, it's wegook.org. Wegook is the Korean word for foreigner, by the way. That's why it's funny. Um, wegook.org. And if you go to a site where it's like lesson plans, what they do there is they have it separated into the, um, each book and each grade, and what people do is they post um, games they've made for it, um, and worksheets, and PowerPoint presentations. Trust me, you guys, I don't know how your PowerPoint is now, but after one year, he, year here, your PowerPoint skills are going to be phenomenal. Like, I, it's amazing what you can do with PowerPoint, and what I've learned in the two years I've been here. Um, also, um, be familiar with what a bomb game is, because that is the most popular type of game that ESL students here like. Um, it's kind of like a review game. It's all done through PPT. Um, but uh, yeah, Wegook will have all those kinds of resources. The one thing, I know a lot of you guys want to prepare now and you want to start making stuff now and feeling more prepared, but books change every so often. And I know um, in my case, the fourth grade and third grade books are changing, the fifth and sixth grade books are remaining the same. You won't know what even what book series you're even using until your first day. So there is no way you can truly prepare now. But the way you could is by familiarizing yourself with Wegook and its resources. Because most teachers, they pull from that website and then they modify it to their school or their classes needs. Hope that answered things for you, Luke. Mm -hmm. Okay, the time is up. So thank you very much again for the great questions and amazing answers, Stephen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope that this webinar and Q&A was helpful for you to prepare your arrival. If you have any further questions, please contact with your recruiter or um, leave your question on our Facebook group, okay? Okay, so thank you very much again, and we hope to see you soon. Have a safe trip to Korea. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.